The similarity map tab in Easy Mix 3, it's a fun and unique way when you're looking for inspiration for sounds, or it can also be used as a tool to help you hone in on that particular tone. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for full courses and hundreds of free videos just like this one. I also have Facebook and Discord groups, fantastic communities. Links are in the description. Let's get started. I'm on a new empty project. I've selected the similarity map tab. And here we see four themes. We see amps and cabs. We see mix utility. We see saturation and reverbs and delays. And as we look at this whole page, it's like a galaxy of different colored dots. And each one of those dots represents a preset that comes from our master preset list over here. So I'll just select a dot randomly. I'll select this one right here. And as we can see, it gives us the tooltip Pop Rock Master. It's selected Pop Rock Master in our preset list. It's loaded it up into our rack. And now the controls are down here ready to play. So the similarity map tab, it does not sort your preset list. It's only capable of selecting one preset for you. So what is its purpose? Let's go after a more inspirational, fun workflow first. So we have this galaxy of what looks like different colored stars so kind of choose you know what theme or solar system you want to explore first i'm kind of into sci-fi so i'm gonna have fun with this um you know are we mixing a demo mixing a track for mix utility are we just trying to beef up a signal are we trying to wet up a signal or are we working with dry signals that we need to completely change the sound of and the tone of so let's say i'm mixing a track just bring your cursor over here and click on one of these dots just to get started um for people with bad eyesight this might look like a nightmare but it's not there's some zoom tools right here you can click the plus to zoom in the minus to zoom out. Now it's not focusing on the preset I have selected when I zoom in, but that's okay. What's way more intuitive with zooming is your mouse wheel or the a certain gesture on your trackpad. And now I can just easily zoom in with no effort at all. You know, tons of programs do this. And after you're zoomed in a little bit to explore, you just grab onto a blank spot, not a preset. Actually, you can grab onto a preset as well and just click and drag around so you can explore from solar system to solar system. So once I'm in a solar system I want to check out, once it looks appetizing, um, I can just start clicking around. But better than that with navigating, I wonder if these arrows work. So these arrows, I, it's the first time I'm clicking on these arrows actually. So you can click left to right on these arrows, but you kind of run into roadblocks. I wonder if this is going to get tightened up in the future. I'm not even going to use those arrows anyway, just like I'm not going to use those zoom tools. All four arrows on your keyboard work, and they work perfectly. Up and down goes up and down, left and right goes left and right. So all four go in any direction. So now I'm going left, and I'm just traveling from mix utility towards amps and cabs. Or maybe I want to go down towards saturation, so now I'm going downwards. So it's kind of cute, and I'm exploring. <laughs> I'm feeling like I'm in Star Trek right now. I'm a Star Wars guy, but the exploration vi theme is more Star Trek, right? So down, left, and right, up, and you just kind of, you know, you're on your reconnaissance mission to explore these different themes and find some good tones. Now, when you go up and down or left and right, it's not going to move you in a linear, a vertical linear format straight through the preset list at all like this is that's a filters tab workflow when you're looking for tones we're just in a completely different universe now you know so left goes left i'm going towards saturation you know and it's it's pretty cool and then uh, if you get in between saturation and mix utility supposedly you're kind of getting both of those worlds so what the similarity map tab does not do is sort your preset list over here it doesn't do that at all it selects one single preset it just has a unique way of finding that preset for you that the filters tab is not capable of let's start a new empty project and i want to talk about how the filters tab and the similarity tab collaborate with each other it's super cool so i've done no sorting at this point it's a new project we see every preset in the galaxy here and every preset here in the preset list over 900 of them let's hop over to the filters tab 
and select any filter on this tab. Doesn't matter which one. I'm going to select the metal one because I know there's a lot of metal presets. And now let's go back over to the similarity tab. Now, a ton of our stars have died. Uh, they're all stellar remnants at this point or a bunch of supernovas happened. So the majority of our presets, over 50%, have gone away. Poof. Now, that's not a bad thing because now we're trying to get more focus with the similarity map tab. Now we can just see metal presets because supposedly we're pursuing metal sounds. Now, that doesn't mean rock presets can't work for metal. They most certainly can. I would not, um, I would not discard them. So let's go over to the filters tab. I'll hold shift. I'll select rock. And now we have even more stars are coming back. They're coming back alive. So that's fantastic that the filters tab will sort the similarity map tab for you to focus and save you a bunch of time. Um, one thing to keep note of, which is super cool, is not only do we see this number next to our filters tab or on our filters tab two, meaning we have two filters chosen, but also the filter chips stick around when you're on the similarity map. So now I can just toggle rock on and off we can see how much of the galaxy is coming back. It's actually pretty cool looking. It's like uh, 1980s Christmas lights blinking. Um, or we can get rid of the metal ones. We can kind of understand how many rock ones there are versus metal, and you can make some decisions to maybe save some time there. Or you can completely annihilate a filter to not come back. You'd have to go back to the filters tab and select it. Not sure why you would do this right now unless you got a million filters up and you just want to clean up your work area. Cooler than that is on the filters tab. If you mouse over this too, you have two options. The X will annihilate both of these filter chips permanently, and you got to go back to the filters tab to select them. But even cooler than that is you can bypass both of these filter chips temporarily, or as many filter chips as you have activated in the filter chip string with one touch of a button. So now the whole galaxy comes back everything you own on your system, whether it's Easy Mix 3 or a bunch of add-on packs as well. Now that's super cool because check out this quick example. Let's say I'm sorting rock and metal and I go, man, I like this metal snare, but it's just not perfect. I wonder what else is in that solar system that's really close to that star. You could just bypass real quick and go, Heck, let me try these three stars out or planets out. Let me check out this moon over here, right? And then you can be like, ah, uh, actually, I want to get more focused. I want to move on to something else, but I'm still in rock and metal. All right, let me bring this back. So, oh, uh, that's pretty unique. So select filters from your filters tab to get you focused on your destination in your similarity map tab. And when you've found, you know, a planet that you like, but it's not perfect, bypass all your filter chips and open up your options around that star you've discovered and maybe you will find like that planet that has water and oxygen on it the perfect habitable planet let's talk about colors and themes real quick so if you're on the similarity map you go over this info icon just mouse over it and it'll give you like a color key amps are blue reverbs green mix yellow saturation is a reddish uh, orange, reddish, peach, I guess. But if I zoom in, you know, I see more colors than that. I mean, just right out of the gate, here's purple, right? And I'm not sure, I'm not going to color sample all these to see if there's anything more than that. But, you know, purple's not explained in that info panel. So is this still in development? Is there more to come? I don't know. But what else has colors are different presets. It's interesting. I'll just click on one. This one's kind of an orange. A lot of the base ones are orange, but not all of them. I'll just click on a few real quick. This one's closer to red. It's probably rock related. This is purple. It's vocal related. Yeah, and here's a delay effect. So now we're back to a yellow or a gold. I can't tell exactly what these colors are because there's a cool gradient going through it. But the graphics also have the theme color from these macro faders in it like here's your yellow gold and you know there's something purple about this there's a purple highlight in there so the graphics pretty cool the graphics are also kind of tinted towards the theme color as well so 
I spent 20 or 30 minutes on this, and once I realized there's no real scientific formula to it, I kind of gave up on trying to find one. But I still want to explain it to you. I wonder if Toontrack's going to go somewhere with this or not. I'll go over to the Filters tab. I'll select Metal. I'll select uh, Guitar. Now, it seemed like Metal is green for the most part, like this. It's a cool green vibe. That graphic's awesome. But as we click down, you know, red is rock. And since rock can probably double as a metal tone, so that actually makes sense. Those either it's red or it's green for metal. But if we go over to base, I'll deselect these filters, I'll kill them, I'll go over to base, and I'll go to metal. The base presets, those aren't really green anymore. That's a grayish silver. It's not green anymore. So you can see how this, like the continuity kind of goes out the window. I'm, I'm actually happy that we're not just looking at 900 plus presets of gold or yellow. You know, it's these themes really look cool, but I don't think there's anything to really memorize here unless it's still in development and this gets tightened up. But, you know, I would have liked to see straight up green base metal presets. And then I would always know, hey, green means metal or red can also double as metal. There's a few other examples just off the top of my head that I remember. Like if I see something purple, it's vocals, not necessarily because generic synth, here's synth, here's generic. Those are purple too. So not really sure what to make of it, but it's just kind of cool to acknowledge, I guess, that there are colors and they can kind of give you a hint of what you're dealing with, but there's not like an exact continuity throughout. And I'm just grateful Easy Mix 3 looks completely badass with its graphics that are themed with a color, its macro faders that are themed with a color, and it just looks visually fantastic. I hope you learned something today about the similarity map tab, and maybe after this video, you'll find a way to work it into your workflow to be more creative with your productions and finding new sounds. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for complete courses and hundreds of free videos just like this one. Check out my Facebook, my Discord group, great communities. Links are in the description. If you want to see me ever again, hit the subscribe button. If you want to do me a favor, comment below. That helps out very much. Or consider donating at shootyschool.com. I'll catch you on the next one.